Okay, let's look at the assessment settings. Uh, so in the assessment settings, the first option is the name. This is just the name of the assessment. Uh, next is the summary. So the summary will display both on the course page and also at the very beginning of the assessment before the student actually starts it. So like if there's a time limit or something, this will display before they actually start the time limit. Uh, so, so we can see what that looks like. I'll add some summary text there. Uh, the next is intro and instructions. This displays after the student actually starts the assessment. So for example, again, if there's a time limit, this would be after they actually start the assessment um, and you know start the time limit. Um, so we'll put in a little bit of text there. Uh, the next set of options is uh, date control. Um, so you can set uh, you know when you want it available when you want it due and then optionally you can make it available for ungraded practice after the due date if you'd like um, that way the student can get new new versions of the problem for practice after the due date so let's look at our at our core options here so the first option is for display style um, so the normal one is or the most common one is one question at a time now this one's kind of nice because the, as it says, the students can see one question at a time. And that looks like this. So when they first come in, they'll see the intro. There will be a little drop down where they can select the question they want to work on or they can just click the next here. And as you can see, there is one question at a time displaying, hence the one question at a time setting. Uh, the next option that you might use sometimes is all questions at once or in pages. If you use that option, this is what you'll normally see. So at the top is the intro and then there is each of the four questions. Uh, and as you can see, the student can still submit each question individually, at least in most of the time. Uh, so they don't have to like do every single question before submitting. They can check their answers on each question as they go along. Uh, but this is nice if, if for some reason you like them to be able to see all the questions at the same time. Now, you'll, you remember that setting did say or in pages, and uh, that's because in the questions list, so this would happen later, uh, if you add questions before your text, you can opt to make those pages. Um, so, for example, I might have a first page there and then create a second page uh, second page here. And if I create pages in my assessment like that, then kind of like the one at a time, um, you know, you'll see the drop down and the forward backwards buttons here, but it's broken up into those pages that you selected. And on the first page, we have those first two questions, and on the second page, we have the second two questions, uh, which is based on what follows those page designators here. Uh, so if you want to you know, show multiple questions at a time, but then have them broken up in some way, this um, you know, in pages option is a way to do that. The other two display options are a little bit more specialized. Video queued is a mode where you upload a video and create um, cue points in the videos where the questions will be displayed. Uh, it's kind of like, uh, what's that site, Edpuzzle. Uh, and then Live Poll is a um, synchronized live system, kind of like Kahoot's, where um, you know the, the teacher you know, all the students log in at the same time, the teacher opens up a question, and as students do their work, the results show up uh, on the teacher's site automatically, immediately. Um, so that's more like a, um, you know, a polling style display. So most of the time you're gonna use one of these first two options. So now let's talk about submission type. So there's two submission types, homework style or quiz style. Um, most of the time, if you're doing a homework, you'll you'll want to do homework style, and if you're doing a quiz or test, you're going to use the quiz style. The big difference between the two is with homework style, each question is submitted individually, and the students score 
just tallies up as they work on questions. With the quiz style, the student actually has to submit the whole quiz at the end before it counts towards their score. Um, the other difference is how new versions are handled. In the homework style, new versions are done on a per question level, whereas in quiz style, they can retake the whole quiz, but then they get new versions of all the questions in the quiz instead of it happening, happening individually. Um, once you've selected your options, then you have um, options here for how many versions do you want to allow. So like for homework, maybe you allow 20, maybe you allow 100. Um, you know, if you don't really care how many times they, how many different versions, you know, you can give them a ton of versions um, if you want. Uh, and if you want to take off a penalty for each version, you can do so. Um, and then within each version of the question, you can specify how many tries you want to allow on that particular version of the question. So for example, I might allow 100 questions or 100 different versions, uh, allow two different tries on each version with no penalty, and I'm going to go ahead and show them, I'm going to show them their scores immediately, which you'll notice is the only option here because it doesn't make sense to allow multiple tries and multiple versions if you're not showing them how they did. It, so the system is going to restrict your options a bit based on what makes sense. Uh, and then during the assessment, I'm going to show them their answer after the last try. So if I use those options here, then if I'm a student and I come into this question, uh, if I answer it wrong twice, remember we said that they were going to get two tries on that question, um, and after the second try, we're going to show them the answer. And so there we go, we've shown them the answer. Uh, but we've allowed them additional versions as well. And so if the student misses the question, they can click try a similar question and it will generate a new version of the question for them. And they can see up here how many versions they have remaining and how many tries they have remaining on this particular version of the question. Uh, so that's what the versions and tries mean. The tries are referring to number of tries on the same version of the question, the same numbers. And then versions is allowing the whole retries. And again, the, the homework style means that they are, uh, that they can ask for that new version on each individual question. Whereas if I was in quiz style, you know, maybe I'm going to allow, you know, three retakes. Um, again, you can do penalties. You can decide whether to keep the best score, the last score, or the average. And if we choose that option instead, then you'll notice at the very beginning, it's going to say you can take this assessment three times. And if I start the assessment, now on this one, I've allowed multiple tries. And so I can, the student can check their answer. And if they get it wrong, they can check it again. Um, and then eventually they're just going to be out of tries. Um, and notice there is no try a similar question here because we're in quiz mode. Uh, and then the student can do the next question and the next one, and they don't have to submit each individually if they don't want to. But in quiz style, once they're done with all of their questions, they have to actually click the submit and end button in order to finalize their quiz and actually submit it. Uh, so when they're done, they can hit submit, and now it'll show them how they did. Um, they can go and look over their results, and then they can retake the assessment because remember we allowed them, uh, you know, three attempts at this assessment. So their last attempt, they got a 25%, uh, and now they can retake the assessment again, right? So that's the difference in quiz style is that they have to complete the entire quiz or test or whatever it is. Um, and submit it before they can then view the results. Um, one of the other big differences in with quiz style is if you only allow one try per question. So if you're allowing one try per question, then we don't have to show scores immediately for it to make sense. And if you want to, you can just have it show the scores at the end of the assessment, 
uh, or just show the total score at the end, but not show the individual question scores, or you can have it not show any scores at all. So all of those are options there um, when you're doing when you're doing uh, quiz style. And you'll notice when we chose no scores at all, then the um, answer option went away because it didn't make sense anymore. By the way, if you're doing homework style uh, and only allow one version of a question, then there is an option that pops up for not showing any scores. Um, this can be handy sometimes when you're doing uh, like a take-home test where you, they only have one version of it. Uh, you want them to be able to submit the thing. And this even allows them to do multiple versions, uh, sorry, multiple tries. So if you want them to be able to like submit their answer and then if they change their mind, come back later and submit it again. Uh, but you don't ever want to cut them off, which is what a quiz style would do, right? A quiz style, as soon as they submit, they're done. Uh, but with the homework style, you know, maybe you don't want to show them any scores because it's a take-home test, uh, but you do want to allow them to retry. And so that is an option as long as your versions is set to one. Okay, so now we've got our sort of core options here, right? So that's display style, submission style, quiz or homework, the number of versions, the number of tries, and then whether we're going to show the scores during the assessment and whether we're going to show any answers during the assessment. The, the next group of settings control when, what the students can see in the gradebook. Um, so do you want them to be able to view their work, like the answers that they have submitted and the questions in the gradebook? So the first option controls that, um, whether or not they can view their work in the gradebook. The second one controls whether they can view their scores in the gradebook. Uh, so sometimes, like with, you know, sometimes you want to be able to restrict the access to the scores until after the due date. Um, and so in a case where it makes sense to do that, then you can restrict their scores till after the due date. Um, and likewise with answers, you know, you can either, you can specify whether you want them to be able to see the answers in the gradebook after the due date or never. And then the final of the core options is gradebook category. If you have gradebook categories defined, this is where you would select the gradebook category. So those are these are the core options, and these are the ones that you're going to need to deal with the most often. Um, there are only one other setting. I'm going to two other settings I'll mention uh, quickly, and then we'll go in more depth in a later video. Uh, the first is under time limit and access control. If you want to allow the use of late passes, here's where you can control that. If you want to set a time limit for the assessment, you can do so here. Uh, and if you wanted to require a password, say for proctoring or something like that, you can put one in here. Um, one other uh, quick one is under help and hints. If, if let's say on a quiz, you wanted to hide the video help, uh, this is how you could hide the video help or hints. Um, on the questions without having to like create a new question or do anything like that. So this can be very helpful on sort of summative assessments like quizzes and tests where you want to use a question that already has a video but you want to hide the video from the student. Okay, so those are the core assessment options in the new system.